There are seven things that the devil injected into the soul of the man that form the major corruption in the soul. And if a man encounters God and his word genuinely, these things will be reversed. When that happens, you become a son. When you give your heart to Christ or you receive the life of God, you become a child. A child is not a son. A child is not a son. When you receive eternal life, you become a child of God. It takes maturity to come into sonship. The first definition of a son is one who is led by the Spirit of God. He said, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, he said, they are the sons of God. That means you hear the voice of God and you have come to a point where you are submitted to the government of His Spirit. So He leads you. You no longer do things because you are smart and creative. You do things because you connect to the frequency of heaven and God dictates for you. The second thing the Bible reveals about son is the ability to image him. Because when he defined Jesus as a son, he said he was the brightness of his glory, the express image of his person. So when a man becomes a son, when you see him, you can no longer know him after the flesh. He will represent a dimension in God. So you can image the Christ. And the third thing about the son is one who is under the discipline of God. He said, if you are not bastards but sons, then you will endure the chastening of the Lord. It's when these credentials are put in place that you, then you can now begin the project of priesthood. You represent God and you become the bridge between God and humankind. You become the gate between God and earth. If these three things are not achieved, you can't do it. But the reason many cannot be sons is because of the seven corruption that is in the soul of man. And this is what the devil is exploiting to raise agents that is using for the last day. Number one is distraction. When a man does not have gravity in his spirit, anything can get his attention. And the first thing intimacy will do for you is to severe distraction from your soul. You see, when you find a child, he can't even focus on anything for five seconds. He doesn't know what he wants to do. He sees a football, he's running. He sees light, he's running. He sees phone. So many have not come into God. They are not gathered into his presence enough to shave off the elements of distraction. And so when you allow distraction, enter your soul. That's why the devil got a room into the garden in the first place. Adam was not keeping the gate. And the devil sneaked in and deceived the woman. And everybody fell. What was he doing? When God put him in the garden, God kept him there to guard it and to keep it. Where was he? He was distracted, doing things that don't concern his ordination. When a man truly will grow and be usable in the hand of God, that man will fight distraction and anytime you see him, he will be about his ordination. The parable was told in 1 Kings 20 verse 40. He said, my Lord gave me a servant to keep he said but as i was busy here and there he said i lost him and he said your life shall be demanded there are too many people busy here and there they are not about the master's business and so when you find the people who are astray distraction is what defines them what do you spend your time on have you dictated discern your ordination and you living with it the second corruption that is in the soul of men is fear and the devil knows this that's why you see that in our world today, bad news spreads a thousand times faster than good news. In fact, your subconscious is designed to dictate bad news so that you can be kept safe. And the devil has entered that gate to plant fear in the souls of men. You hear of pandemic, you hear of war, is to distract, is to, is to, is to paralyze you with fear. And the moment you become afraid, your discernment goes down. Your ability to exercise faith is short-circuited. And so fear is a corruption in the souls of men. Number three is lust and carnality. When a man becomes carnal and lustful, he can no longer receive the things God has made available. He said, the carnal man, the natural man, receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, neither can he know them. So he becomes blinded. He can no longer pick the vibrations of God. And because he's blinded, he can't participate in the commonwealth of Israel. Neither can he be part of God's army. The fourth corruption in the souls of men is selfishness and self-centeredness so they are all about themselves and because they are all about themselves god cannot commit any serious thing to them if you check your life 
how much can you have for yourself what do you need he said if you have what to wear what to eat and where to lay your head he said be contempt with such but you see when selfishness comes you can't look at your brother you can't think about your brother and because you can't think about your brother you cannot be part of god's agenda because everything about god begins with our is our father is not my father you will never hear my father who art in heaven is our father who art in heaven hello be thy name but a selfish man cannot see beyond his nose and because he's too self-centered god cannot bring him to be part of an agenda that has his roots in eternity and so the devil knows so he plants selfishness in the souls of men the principle of the world is that get all you can and can all you get it is me and myself and that's where it stops but that's not god's agenda when you come into god it becomes about others selfless selflessness is what defines god's operational modality the 15 which is the corruption of the soul is pride and this is why god can't promote people even though they are very gifted because god himself will be the one to break you he said he exhorts the humble but he airbusts the proud the moment a man allows that iniquity to enter his soul he becomes the enemy of god no matter how good he is god can't use him because he becomes a god of himself and so the devil knows so the devil will pamper our pride to make sure we think we are better he said let this mind be in you even that that was in christ jesus he said though he was equal with god he didn't clinch to those privileges he said rather he let go of them on the strength of that he was able to serve god's agenda and after serving god's agenda he said god gave him a name that was above every name at the name of jesus every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that jesus is lord the bible says the foundation of every crisis the foundation of every contention he said is pride crisis is not a product of misunderstanding crisis is a product of pride no matter how difficult the issue is if misunderstanding is the only issue it can be addressed the reason things escalate is because somebody is high-minded and so he no longer allows room for peace so the reason for crisis is not misunderstanding is pride are you following it's a corruption in the souls of men number six corruption is wickedness and that wickedness is a product of mutation that happened to the souls of men and so instead of men to be benevolently disposed like the god that they represent they begin to think evil and mischief about others that's where competition comes from that's where hatred comes from that's where anger comes from a man becomes wicked and when a man becomes wicked he no longer finds peace because there's no peace for the wicked man and the moment peace is taken away the possibilities of divinity are exonerated from your sphere and the devil knows this so he plants wickedness in the souls of men one thing you will do for yourself is tell yourself i will not hate anybody even the ones that should be hated tell yourself i will not be part of any group that tries to pull down anybody if it is not about exhorting them i rather stay away because even in church today the foundation of witchcraft is wickedness there are cabals everywhere gang ups everywhere using young christians who are not yet strong in love as a weapon to fight others pastors stand on their puppets to puppies today manipulative messages they preach them so that they turn people against others some go as far as lying in the name of prophecies to make young believers who should grow in love to become weapons in their hands to fight their enemies no matter what i tell you don't fight anybody because of me if you do it i've destroyed you don't make my enemy your enemy if i have one that's not the path god has called me to lead you my job is to lead you to christ and to grow in christ no matter what anybody does, does to me don't be part of an army that will fight them and if i encourage it i've lost my office because that's not why i came that's what happened in corinth they gang up and some say they belong to apollos some say they belong to paul some say they belong to Cephas, and they thought the apostles would be happy because in our generation when you say you belong to this camp you belong to these people they are excited and then they teach people how to take weapons to fight other believers whereas the devil knows that our strongest weapon is unity he said wherever two or three are gathered together in my name there i am in their midst whatever they bind on earth is bound in heaven and he knows that when unity is broken we are helpless and defenseless and so he goes into our wickedness and allows us to use the precious influence and platform god gave us to raise armies to fight ourselves and a house divided against itself cannot stand 
And so they thought the apostles would be happy. And Paul came and looked at them and said, Wake up, you carnal people. He said, Did Paul die for you? Did Apollos die for you? Did Christ die for you? He said, Paul planted Apollos water. Christ gave the increase. You don't belong to Paul. You don't belong to Apollos. All of us belong to Christ. Wickedness. That's where witchcraft comes from. Manipulation. And what we spend to satisfy our ambition is the destiny of others. Young people that have great potentials in God, instead of teaching them to fight and to defend God's integrity, we manipulate their minds and turn them to army, an army that fights to defend us. And these issues are issues that if we were humble, we would have addressed in a moment. And so you'll discover that after 10 years, 10,000 young people that started praying and seeking God, only three become relevant. And you are wondering, where are the others? When you went to that prayer mountain, you were 50. Where are the 49? Why is it only one voice that rose from there? Because they became armies fighting for the interest of another man. Wickedness. Finally, the corruption in the heart of men is religion. Please, refuse to be religious. Don't pray to create impression. Don't quote scripture to appear spiritual. Pursue Jesus. Allow the Holy Ghost to lead you and come under the authority of the word. Don't leave. Christianity is not emotion. Emotions are involved, but it's deeper. When you are doing anything, check from scripture. Find out what scripture says to be done. Find out how scripture says it should be done. And find out the results that scripture says will be gotten when you do it. Then you will stop being a religious man. If scripture says prayer is a what, know it. Then find out how to pray. And when you pray, check the results that prayer commands. If these three things are not in place, you are a religious man. Don't do things that you just enjoy. As you are growing, your emotions will change at different age level. That's why you can't build your life on emotions. If you are given a seed, find out. Did the Bible say to sow seed? Yes. How should we sow seeds? Find it out. Don't allow anybody to come to preach you into giving. Do it by revelation and understanding. And when you find out how, when you give, watch out for the results. Because if how is correct, the results must show. If the results don't show, then something was wrong with how. And so stop the action. Go back and get the how right. Because you may think, see, the, see what religion does. Religion punishes you. It brings a lot of penance. And because you are doing a lot of punishment, you are assuming that God will look at it. Paul was teaching in Colossians chapter 2 and he told them, don't be deceived by these people that advocate for pious appearance and a lot of penance and self bodily affliction. He said that does not produce results. I'm not speaking against sacrifice. There's a place for sacrifice. But I'm telling you anything that has its root in emotion and not in the revelation of the world in the New Testament context is religion. And that's what's killing many people. And you know the goal of religion is to make you appear important. Is to make you appear significant. Is the way of the Pharisees. If you are serving God right, God will break you. If you are doing it the way of Bible, it will humble you. Any spiritual activity you are doing that makes you puff up, corruption has entered. Be it prayer, be it preaching, be it giving. So the moment it makes you puff up, that's religion. If it is Christ, it will humble you. Because let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Though equal with God, he did not clinch to that right. God is desperately in need of men. And if men will rise, who will be able to represent what we heard in this talk show, then they must rid themselves of this corruption. These are the things sin introduced to the souls of men. Because all of these are built on a foundation called sin and iniquity.